spent last year more acreage in our forests burned than ever before. And I know the President of the Senate understands what this has been like in the West over the last few years. And Senator Crapo and I have dedicated something like five years of our professional lives to coming up with practical approaches to deal with this mushrooming problem. Now, there are a whole host of issues that go into making a sensible forestry policy to make sure that we can protect our treasures in the West, have jobs in the woods that are sustainable, and keep our forests healthy. And in order to do that, one of the most important reforms that uh, is necessary is the one that Senator Crapo and I have been working on. I really began on this before I was the chairman of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. And Senator Crapo and I literally have teamed up now for half a decade to end a particularly inefficient and harmful economic and environmental policy that we call fire borrowing. Fire borrowing takes place when the Congress fails to budget enough money to fight wildfires, forcing agencies to raid their other accounts, including accounts to prevent wildfires. Now, obviously, there may be some listening in who don't represent Western communities, but what Senator Crapo and I have tried to convey to our colleagues is fire borrowing doesn't just threaten fire prevention and suppression, it is quicksand that is dragging down all of the programs at the Forest Service. Timber sales, stream restoration, trail maintenance, recreation, and many more. So Senator Crapo and I said that this was too important to have yet another issue that gets thrown around, batted around like you know another bit of cannon fodder for uh, partisan kind of drills. And we have put together legislation with 21 co-sponsors in the Senate, 145 in the House, to end fire borrowing. And our legislation is supported by a coalition of more than 250 groups of anglers, sportsmen, environmentalists, and timber companies. Pretty hard to get more than a handful of people to agree on much of anything, Mr. President, here in Washington, D.C. And what Senator Crapo and I have been talking about now has more than 250 organizations behind it. Despite the overwhelming support for this effort, the bill has just been stuck. And so tonight, what Senator Crapo and I are going to talk about is how we can work with our colleagues to unstick this and to get it done. We felt that all along we had been doing what it took to make this happen. We talked to our colleagues of both parties. We negotiated. We talked to House members. We talked to Senate offices. We talked to the administration. We talked timber and environmental uh, people. And all we said is it makes sense, even though there are a whole host of changes that you could pursue for a sensible fire policy to end fire borrowing for good, end the erosion of the Forest Service budget, and start focusing on prevention. Because wouldn't it make more sense to concentrate on prevention going there, in there and thinning out the forests and using sensible fire prevention um, strategies rather than to not do the prevention, have the forests get hot and dry, and then we have lightning strikes in our part of the world, and all of a sudden you have an inferno on your hands, and they don't have enough money to put all these fires out, and so you borrow from the prevention fund and the problem gets worse. And what Senator Crapo and I said is, we'll work with all of the budget authorities. We uh, were very much involved with uh, Chairman Enzi in this. 
and we could come up with some budget process issues that would be acceptable here in the Senate and also to our colleagues in, uh, in the House. Now, uh, there was a colloquy last week uh, between the chairs of the Energy and Budget and Agriculture uh, Committee that indicated that they very much want a resolution of the issue. And I'm pleased that they're interested in hearings and working on legislation and moving in uh, March and uh, February. And I felt that this was a promising start to the year because that's what Senator Crapo and I were after last July when we got a great many senators together and we said, we're gonna try to get this worked out so it could have been done last fall. And we all said, we're gonna get together and get this um, resolved. And obviously for a variety of reasons it uh, didn't happen, happen. But I think what we heard last week, Senator Crapo strikes me as a beginning to finally getting this thing unstuck. And I have been so appreciative of working with you on this now for something like five years. And I, I'd be interested in, uh, in your reaction with respect to this situation. Thank you. Mr. President. Senator from Idaho. Mr. President, I strongly agree with my friend and colleague, Senator Wyden from Oregon. Uh, he's absolutely right that uh, we've been working on this now for uh, probably five years as we have worked to identify the solution and then build the coalition of support to implement the solution that's necessary for this critical problem. I'm also very appreciative, as Senator Wyden has said, uh, that we had the chairman of the Energy Committee, chairman of the Budget Committee, and the chairman of the Agriculture Committee uh, engage in a, colleague, in, a, in a colloquy last week uh, discussing the urgency of resolving this issue. And I believe that we are now uh, getting to a point at which the understanding of how critical it is to resolve this issue has penetrated deeply into the political fiber of both the Senate and the House. And now we need to, to take that momentum and continue to move forward. As we take stock of last year's fire season, uh, the statistics are sobering. Uh, Senator Wyden referenced a little bit of it. Let me just add to that a little bit. Nationally, last year, we had 68,151 fires that burned 10.1 million acres and cost over $1.7 billion in suppression operations. These fires accounted for the loss of roughly 4,600 structures and most tragically, the lives of 13 wildland firefighters. And this set of statistics is a set of statistics that is growing every year. We are seeing more fires and more catastrophic fires every year because we are not managing our forests properly and we are not dealing with the crisis that that is creating in forest fires. There's a very important statistic that I think everyone in America should understand about this critical issue. I just said there were 6, 68,151 fires in America last year. 1% of those fires cost 30% of the firefighting budget. Those are the fires that became catastrophes. They became catastrophic. And the solution that we have come together with to help address this issue is to simply make a, various, a very obvious conclusion and put it into the law. And that is that we get, when we get a fire that is one of those 1% of the fires that cost 30% of the firefighting and do so much of the damage, we, do, we, we declare that they are natural disasters, just like the earthquakes, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, and the floods, and the other disasters that we acknowledge here in Congress and deal with as disasters when we finance the efforts to fight them and to respond to them. 
With these numbers in mind, I want to, ch want to again thank the committee chairman who came to the floor last week and engaged in a colloquy to express how serious this issue is. It's getting to a crisis point. As those senators last week noted, when it comes to how we fight wildfires, we are in a crisis. For more than a decade, as fires have raged across the West, we have seriously under-budgeted for the necessary suppression costs with these disasters. And to make matters worse, the lack of resources to fight the worst of our annual fires has forced land management agencies into what Senator Wyden has so ably described, fire borrowing that results in less money for the very activities that can prevent the large, devastating fires from happening in the first place. What happens is our management agencies, the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management, and those who deal with the wild lands and the grasses that burn, have had to borrow from all of their other funds so that they can't adequately manage the land so that we then end up with more bad fires. And every year, the catastrophic fires grow. When the Forest Service is forced to borrow to fight fires, they are actually borrowing against jobs and against recreational opportunities and against proper forest management. The best way to think of forest of fire borrowing is less timber, less jobs, less access to these beautiful lands because while it is fire borrowing, in many cases, it delays the repayment in ways that actually cancel projects, undercut the ability to implement proper forest management, lose jobs, and reduce access to our public lands. Perhaps the most destructive is the fact that less work in the woods means that the harmful cycle just gets worse. As Senator Wyden has noted, to address this problem, we have consistently introduced legislation for years now that would treat the devastating fires as the disasters that they are. While there was broad agreement, oh, by the way, Mr. Mr. President, I want to back up for one second. Um, we talk about the fact that there's a, a cost that is not being uh, provided for by Congress and that this fire borrowing has to happen. But it's, I think, critical to note that our solution has been scored by both the Congressional Budget Office and by the OMB at the White House as having zero budget impact. It will not increase the deficit because we do end up paying to fight these fires. It's just that the way we end up paying to fight them is the way we deal with so much of our catastrophic health care at the emergency room with the most expensive solution with the worst outcomes and we don't deal with the underlying crisis. And while there was broad agreement from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle and in both houses of Congress that a fix to fire borrowing is needed, there have been different approaches to the solution. Senator Wyden and I have been very, very willing to work with those who have different ideas about how we need to solve this problem and actually to make adjustments in our legislation as we move forward to deal with issues and concerns that others have raised. But now we are at the crisis point. And now we need to move forward and put a final resolution in place. Senator Wyden and I have worked with these lawmakers and continue to work with them, and we will continue to do so. We are simply here tonight to say that we're very pleased to see that the leadership of the critical committees in the Senate and others so concerned about this issue are in agreement that we need to put this on the front burner and engage with developing a solution and putting it into law. I look forward to working with Senator Wyden, with uh, the Chairman of our Energy and Budget and Agriculture Committees, and all of the interested stakeholders who Senator Wyden mentioned. 250 different groups from across the political spectrum. This is one of those issues on which those groups that so often have different perspectives on how to manage our public lands are in agreement. And we need to take this support, the political agreement that's taking place, and the political awareness of the crisis that is happening and move forward to the implementation of a solution. So I appreciate the opportunity to come here to the floor tonight and, and uh, talk with Senator Wyden one more time about this as we move to the final stages of implementing this important legislation. President. Senator from Oregon. I want to thank my friend from Idaho. And in wrapping this up, just want to convey what I think the bottom line really is here. 
Senator Crapo and I do not want to be back on the floor of the United States Senate in the winter of 2017, once again talking about how somehow something got stuck, somebody didn't agree with somebody on one small aspect of this, and fire borrowing was still in place. What Senator Crapo and I are saying is we want to work with all sides. It's going to have to be bipartisan, and it's going to have to be bicameral. Those are probably the most important words, Mr. President, in this whole discussion. It's going to have to be bipartisan. It's going to have to be bicameral. We've got lots of committees involved here. We've got the Energy and Natural Resources Committee that I'm on, the Agriculture Committee, the Budget Committee that both of us have been on. So we've got lots of committees here in the Senate, and we've got partners in the House who also have got to play a meaningful uh, role. I like to think that Senator Crapo and I were able to move that bipartisan, bicameral process a fair ways down the road at the end of last year. But what we're saying is, let's now vow as a body, working with our colleagues to make sure we're not back here in the winter of 2017, after yet another horrendous fire season, once again saying, you know, this Forest Service practice is a textbook case of inefficiency, and we're explaining what fire borrowing is and how it does so much damage in the forest uh, and to forest uh, health. This is about the betterment of rural resource-dependent communities, especially in the West, but around uh, the country. Senator Crapo and I have worked together on other past you know, efforts to secure rural schools uh, legislation, the Healthy Forest Restoration Act, we were both involved in those efforts, and they were, in fact, bipartisan and bicameral. So tonight, our hope is, as a result of this discussion, what we heard on the floor of the Senate uh, last week, that, in fact, after more than five years of effort on this issue, that this time the Congress on both sides of the Capitol will come together working with the uh, administration, which indicated support for what we were doing last year, they will indicate support early on for efforts that are bipartisan and bicameral. And the sooner we can get on with that, the better. And that is why it's good news that uh, the committees will be starting hearings and uh, legislative consideration shortly. And we look forward to working with our colleagues. And Mr. President, I would yield at this time.